It's Sean Lamb here for Streaming Media Producer and this is a sponsored tutorial for VideoGuys.com of the Roland VR3EX AV Mixer. Now, an AV mixer is very different from a standard video or vision mixer in that it has an audio component to it. The VR3EX is no exception. On the left hand side, this is a full audio console with many inputs including XLR inputs, quarter inch inputs, inputs 5, 6 and 7, 8 are stereo inputs. 5 is the left channel, 6 is the right channel on the RCA inputs and 7, 8 are a stereo input from a mini input so you can take in a computer input if you'd like. And in addition to that, we can take inputs, audio inputs from the embedded HDMI as well. So a very versatile audio mixer, a full-fledged audio mixer in itself. Now the question you might be asking, and I want to address this off the top, is why is this a standard definition video switcher? And this is the year 2014. And there's a very good reason for that. There's still a need out there for video switchers that operate in standard definition. And if you have a look at the output on this video switcher, the up-res 1080p output on this video switcher is exceptionally high quality. Uh, and this is in large part due to the fact that we're using HDMI digital inputs as opposed to analog inputs. They are available, the analog, the composite, and the VGA. However, if you can avoid them, please do so because the digital to digital conversion is not a conversion. Uh, there's scaling involved going from 480p to 1080, but it's way higher quality than if you're to be starting off with analog video inputs. And that in itself is one of the main reasons why Roland updated the VR3 with the VR3 EX video switcher. It's to add that digital HDMI video input that wasn't available on the VR3. Um, so taking that from being an analog video switcher to now this is a digital video switcher as well, it adds on that ability to run the audio, or to de-embed the audio from those HDMI video inputs. If there's anything you take away from this tutorial, it's that there is a place for this video switcher, and it's because of these HDMI inputs that give you that digital-to-digital -digital workflow. Now let's delve a bit further into the audio functionality of this video switcher. For starters, you can see there's a lot of knobs and sliders, just how you'd see in any traditional audio console. And Roland has a, a legacy of audio mixers, so they've done a really good job of laying out uh, the audio side here on this AV mixer. There are four primary sliders here that correspond to the XLR inputs that we see on the side here. Uh, I'm mic'd up right now using one XLR input. This is uh, from my wireless lavalier, and that goes into the side here. There's three additional ones. In addition, for each input, there's a gain knob at the top, and there's a three-band equalizer for high, mids, and lows. I'm now recording this section using the internal microphone on the VR3EX. There are a pair of them located on the top left and top right of the console. And the reason I'm using this microphone is so I can demonstrate to you how I adjust audio inputs. The first one is going to be this XLR input here, which is my lab microphone. We start off by adjusting the slider, raising it to about the parity mark, and that's the, the midway point here where there's no additional audio gain or uh, attenuation from the volume perspective, and that leaves me free to adjust the gain. So I'm now going to turn this microphone off and adjust the gain on the other one until we can hear it properly. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can see now that my audio levels they're pretty good, but I'm clipping just a little bit, so I'm going to back it off a tiny bit. Um, but this, what this points out to me is the need for potentially some additional setup items in the menu. So I'm going to hit Setup here, and available to me is a gate and a compressor. And these are two really neat um, audio level adjustments that I can do. The, the gate, what it does, it, it, you set it at a noise floor level, and this can be uh, to eliminate any hum or noise that's in the background. We're pretty clean here. There's no noise that I can hear in my studio, so I'm not going to adjust the gate. But what I do want to do is adjust the compressor. What the compressor does is it allows me to attenuate audio once it reaches a certain threshold. So if I adjust the levels, I can make sure that I'm not clipping my audio. Used in tandem, the compressor allows you to extend your usable audio range. During your audio setup and testing phase, I find one of the most useful functions 
is the solo and the mute buttons allow me to isolate individual audio inputs so that I don't have to adjust the sliders down. I can just toggle between them. That's located up here as well as the plus 48V that stands for phantom power. And that's to power external microphones that might need a bit of additional power such as a shotgun microphone that's uh, being plugged directly in here without uh, battery power. And finally, in the bottom right corner of the audio setup menu is the delay. Audio doesn't always arrive at the source at the same time. That could be due to the fact the speed of light is faster than the speed of sound, but as well due to audio processing, some of the signals may arrive a bit sooner or later than others. You might notice that the HDMI audio comes in with a little bit more delay than an audio source that's plugged directly into your video switcher. To demonstrate a possible audio processing delay, I'm going to turn on an HDMI audio source and it's from the camera that's located only six feet in front of me. The HDMI volume dials are located right here and if I turn up HDMI audio level three, you can start hearing a delay and this is because the HDMI signal has a bit of a processing delay and so what I would want to do potentially is to delay um, my XLR audio input which doesn't have that delay to match this delay. That's one of the techniques you can use if you experience this type of echo effect. And it's nice that the Roland VR3 has that audio delay functionality built right into the video switcher. One really nice audio feature that Roland added to the VR3 EX is the availability of an aux send for audio. You've got quarter inch outputs here as well as RCA outputs there. And then for audio monitoring, there's 3.5 millimeter headphone jack output as well as the quarter inch outputs. On the program monitor, you can see the individual audio levels for each of your inputs and outputs. And it's really useful when you're trying to get the right audio level mix. You can see what's, what inputs are working and have levels and which ones don't. Now let's move over to the video side of this AV console. The touchscreen monitor on the Roland VR3EX can be set up as a quad view input monitor as well as an output monitor that shows only the program output or an in and output monitor that has the four inputs as well as the output in the center. To select between the four inputs, we can push the four buttons at the bottom. They're set up on straight cuts right now. We can also use the touch screen on the top here. In addition to the four channels that are currently set up for input, if we go into the in out setup menu, we can route additional inputs that are located on the back here that may not be utilized right now uh, into the, uh, the channel path. So the HDMI preview output can be programmed to be either a preview output or an additional send of the program. The RCA output can either be a program output or it can be an aux send of channel two. The program output on the VGA as well as the HDMI are always going to be the program output, but the USB output can either be the program output or it can be an aux send of channel 4. Having aux sends is really important when you want to do more than just having one program output. A lot of times you need to send a feed to a projector, so that could be the VGA output, um, and the webcast could be a different feed than the program output. Sometimes it's the same, and other times you might want to go away from of uh, the program output and sends a slightly different signal to a different audience and the VR3 EX allows you to do that. There are three different mixes you can select from and 99 different wipes. To access the different wipes and mixes we go into the transition setup menu, touch on the wipe and we can toggle between them. You can see the, the previews showing up in here in black and white. Same goes for the mix. There's three different types that we can go through as well. And then to execute them we just simply select a different input and we can see the effect. There are three different output controls that you're going to want to know about. The first is the freeze button that allows you to hold your current frame. The second is turning the dial to black, fade to black, or we can fade it to white and then back up again. There are three different composition options. The first is picture and picture. If I select the picture and picture button, it's prompting me to select the input of the picture and picture. I'm going to appear down here in the bottom right corner. I can change that to a split screen as well, up here on the right hand side, or I can have a quad view that shows all of my available inputs. My input on the bottom right corner is my laptop input that I've been saving for the final demonstration, which is keying. If I want to add a title onto this screen, all I do is hit the key button. I've already got my keying set up on the Luma side, 
and because it's a white text with black background, that's been set up in the menu as well. And we can see I bring in the title here, the Roland VR3EX. So that's the key there. We could also do green, blue, black, and white keying using chroma or luma keying. The level is adjustable using this knob here to refine those edges. And away it goes as cross dissolve. The last thing I want to look at on the VR3EX is the USB output. You can capture using the VR software from Roland, as well as you can use it to webcast with. Now before we move on, it's really important to understand the difference between a square pixel and an anamorphic pixel. The NTSC standard is based on anamorphic pixels. What that means is each pixel is not square. In standard definition 4x3, it has a 0.9 pixel aspect ratio, meaning pixels are a bit taller. Widescreen video has the exact same 720x480 resolution as 4x3 video does. The difference is that the pixels are now wider. A square pixel equivalent needs to be calculated in order to properly webcast so that our images look correct anamorphically and we're not having squished or stretched images. On Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder, 864 by 480 seems to work. Unfortunately, the input and the output uh, don't anamorphically adjust until we start webcasting. Once I start webcasting, you'll now see the difference between my skinny version here, which is anamorphically incorrect, and my proper wider screen version. A similar pixel aspect ratio problem happens using Ustream Producer, which is a white label version of Wirecast. You'll notice the same issue probably on Livestream Producer as well. You need to go into the Asset Manager, select the VR3EX, and change the device aspect ratio from a square pixel webcam to an anamorphic widescreen 720 by 486 here. Once we do this, the aspect ratio will appear correct. So there you have it. This has been a tutorial for VideoGuys.com of the Roland VR3EX AV Mixing Console and USB class streaming appliance. My name is Sean Lamb for Streaming Media Producer. VideoGuys.com is your source for streaming media and live production equipment, storage, and video editing hardware and software. We have specialized in video editing and production for more than 25 years, and our technicians are available to answer your questions and help you find the best solution for your needs and budget.